Welcome back to My Life His Way. Today we are going to be continuing our series on the 28 fundamental beliefs. So last time we went over the first five, which were the Holy Scriptures, Trinity, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Today we're going to be going over creation, nature of man, the great controversy, and life, death, and resurrection of Christ. Grab your Bibles and your notebooks, and let's jump in. So our first belief for today is creation, and it says God is creator of all things, which we know, which we get from Genesis chapter 1, right? And it says, and has revealed in scripture the authentic account of his creative activity. In six days, the Lord made the heaven and earth and all living things upon the earth and rested on the seventh day of that first week. Thus, he established the Sabbath as a perpetual memorial of his completed creative work. The first man and woman were made in the image of God as the crowning work of creation, giving dominion over the world and charged with responsibility to care for it. When the world was finished, it was very good, declaring the glory of God. See, now I love this. Not only is it talking about creation and who God is, and but it shows what we were made for, right? We were made in the image of God as the crowning work. We were the last thing from Adam and Eve were the last creations made before the sabbath so let's read some verses right so we go to genesis 1 right so genesis chapter 1 in the beginning god created right the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of god moved upon the face of the water and God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light and it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Let's jump to the last day, right? To the, to the sixth day. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Right? So there is where he creates man. And when he created woman, and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord had, which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. And she shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. So there we have the account of creation. Uh, there's another verse in Exodus. Let's flip over to Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 through 11. Exodus 20, 8 through 11 says, oh, too far. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, just like God did. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt do, shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gate. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. And I always like to go back to this commandment, the fourth commandment. And it's the only commandment that says, remember. Just remember. 
our next one, number seven, is nature of man. Okay, and it says, man and woman were made in the image of God with individuality. The power and freedom to think and to do. Isn't that amazing? Some people like to think that, oh, we, when we believe in God, we have no freedom. But he gave us the power of choice. He gave us the power to think and to do and to choose, right? Though created free beings, each is an indivisible unity of body, mind, and spirit, dependent upon God for life and breath and all else. When our first parents disobeyed God, they denied their dependence upon him and fell from their high position under God. The image of God in them was marred, and they became subject to death. Their descendants shared this fallen nature and its consequences. They are born with weaknesses and tendencies to evil, but God in Christ reconciled the world to himself and by his spirit restores his penitent mortals the images, the image of their maker, created for the glory of God. They are called to love him and one another and to care for their environment. So our first verse here is Genesis chapter 1, 26 through 28. It says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So that was the sixth day, right? And that's when he created man and woman and he gave us our call, what we what he needed for us to do here on earth, to take care of the land, to take take care of the sea, the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Our next verse is all the way over in Psalm. So Psalm chapter 8 verses 4 through 8 that says what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visitest him for thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hand. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the sea. And verse 9 says, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. There's so many songs in that in that one section there. I had to keep myself from singing them. But isn't it beautiful? Even, even David or the psalmist, whoever wrote this psalm, knew, knew, right? Even all those many years later, he knew what his call was as a creation of God. Our next one number eight is the great controversy says all humanity is now involved in a great controversy between christ and satan regarding the character of god his law and his sovereignty over the universe this conflict originated in heaven when a created being endowed with freedom of choice and self-exaltation became satan God's adversary, and led into rebellion a portion of the angels. He introduced the spirit of rebellion into this world when he led Adam and Eve 
into sin. This human sin resulted in the dissertation, the distortion of the image of God in humanity. The disordering of the created world and its eventual devastation at the time of this worldwide flood. Observed by the whole creation, this world became the arena of the universal conflict, out of which the love of God, out of which the God of love will ultimately be vindicated. To assist his people in this controversy, Christ sends the Holy Spirit and the loyal angels to guide, protect, and sustain them in the way of salvation. So people, a lot of people know that there's a battle between God and Satan, who used to be Lucifer, one of the top angels up there in heaven, right? But some people just think of it as a joke and don't really pay attention to it. But it's really going on if we pay attention to the world and its happenings and and what is what is happening, right? So we're going to go to Revelation chapter 12, verses 4 through 9. And it says, And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought against his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. So the dragon, right, is Satan and his angels, the portion of the angels that he got to follow along with him, they fought. And they fought and they tried and they did not succeed, right? And so they weren't allowed to stay in heaven. Verse 9, and, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now, I, I know some people probably think, oh, this is so cool of God to, to not try to work things out. But there was no working things out with Satan. He wanted to be God. He wanted his position. And could you imagine if God had allowed that? I don't think so. <laughs> Okay, so number nine, life, death, and resurrection of Christ. In Christ's life of perfect obedience to God's will, his suffering, death, and resurrection, God provided the only means of atonement for human sin, so that those who by faith accept this atonement may have eternal life. And the whole creation may better understand the infinite and holy love of the Creator. This perfect atonement vindicates the righteousness of God's law and the graciousness of His character, for it both condemns our sin and provides for our forgiveness. The death of Christ is substitutionary and ex expiatory, reconciling and transforming. The resurrection of Christ proclaims God's triumph over the forces of evil, and for those who accept the atonement assures their final victory over sin and death. It, it declares the lordship of Jesus Christ, before whom every knee in heaven and on earth will bow. Amen. So our first verse is a verse that we all know very well, or many of us know very well. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I'm going to read verse 17 as well, because we always forget that one. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. 
I think it's so important to read both of those verses, right? Because it's not something talked about. It's, we just get, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. But verse 17 tells us that he didn't come to condemn the world, but he came to save it. Our next verse is from Isaiah chapter 53. So we won't read that because it's the whole chapter of Isaiah 53. But let's go to 1 Peter 2. So 1 Peter chapter 2. And verses 21 and 22. And they read, For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Who did not sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Mm -hmm. And verse 23 says, Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. Hmm. So he committed himself to him that judgeth righteous, righteously. Meaning he had already committed to playing this part in our salvation. He promised his father, he gave his promise to God, even though at the end we saw that he suffered there in Gethsemane, but he still gave his life, he gave his all. And well, that's a great like lesson on love when you promise someone that you'll do something for them, even if it's hard. Even if they don't deserve it. I mean, we shouldn't be doing that for people. But that's what Jesus, that's what God did for us. It was hard for both of them, right? But they did it, and we we were given something that we didn't and that we don't deserve. Our last verse this one is 1st Corinthians 15.3 flip backwards here 1st Corinthians 15.3 and 4 and it says for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And in verse 20 through 22, says, But now is Christ risen from the dead, and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die even so in christ shall all be made alive amen so that is the end of today so today we covered four more of the 28 fundamental beliefs so we have covered so far the holy scriptures the trinity or the godhead father son and holy spirit creation nature of man, great controversy, life, death, and resurrection of Christ. We've covered nine out of the 28. We're slowly but surely getting there, but I just pray that whoever is reading this or listening to this will be blessed by what we have learned and what we have read, and that it'll help us to study the scriptures that we will be able to know truth and not just go off of what I'm saying or what I'm reading, but that you will truly go to these verses and read them for yourself. As always, in the description, I will drop the rest of the verses that go for each of these beliefs. And I just pray that you have a great rest of your day.